Well, it's good to be back from the PGA show. We are back for boxes to builds. Combo number five. Let's see what we're going to build today. Welcome back to the McGolf shop. Jim McCleary here, and it is, we're in a level three snow alert. So we're going to do some building and some hitting. Today, we are putting together uh, a box from another box from Georgia and it is the biggest box I've gotten to date it's not as heavy as one would think but there it is right so as always we're gonna open up the box and then we're gonna pick a topic so let's find out what we're gonna do next again with my best Peter McKinnon knife there we go there we go and there we go to do it right-handed is a feat all its own. Oh, okay, a Ping G20 or Ping 425. Well, at least that's the head cover, and that's the actual driver. And it appears to have a tensai orange in it, with lots of packaging. Wow, it's done well. Okay, and then this. Nothing. Oh, it's heavy down there. What else we got? Well, this is all heavy. There's some at the bottom. There we go. I'm going to put all this back. I may use it. Okay, we had to go all the way to the box of the box. Bo <laughs> we had to go all the way to the bottom of the box. Jeremiah, all right. Alpharetta, Georgia. All right, we're going to do a reshaft. Let's do a reshaft. That sounds like a good one. Apparently, we're going to reshaft. We're going to make it 44 and three quarters length. Grip label up, not sensitive to label, which means we can do spine and or flow. Have different driver weights, so I will work on the when it comes back. Okay, so we're reshafting with the a shaft that's in this box. Is that a box, box? I do. It's a boxes to builds boxes to builds. All right, let's get this out. What are we putting in here? Man, straight from Golf Works. Okay. I'll check and see if anything else in there. Ooh, okay. We can talk about a few things here. Let's do a real quick paper cut. Yeah, I had to do that one. You guys saw it. I was unboxing this stuff and I got a paper cut of all things, right? And right in the worst spot, right in the joint. Did it hurt? Well, it's kind of, nobody likes paper cuts, right? But uh, it just a matter. It just goes to show you safety in the area. So whether you're working with heat, needing gloves, or whether you're working with shop objects, needing gloves, or something along the lines, just be careful when you're in the shop. And the paper cut's almost all healed because it's on the hand, so it's a good thing. So anyway, it, I thought it was kind of funny. I wanted to show it to you. <gasps> paper cut. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's get back to it. There's something else in here. Oh, the grip. The grip. No, well, apparently it wasn't that bad a paper cut. Okay, so let's talk about this. Ping 425. Nice club. It is the LST model, as we can tell. LST. LST is low spin technology. It also supports the with the, the fins that were to help throw the air over top of the head, right? And good. Uh, it ha apparently it has a couple of weights. Uh, there's a weight right here. Right, there's a weight right there. And then there is an opening back here that allows, I would imagine, for the addition of uh, rattle stop or if you really, really want to throw some more weight into the head without it being intrusive by adding 
you know, lead tape and that kind of stuff. Uh, the other part of this is, and I'm glad we got, I think we have one. All right, so this is an adjustable club. And as you see, there is a bit of a ferrule, and that's a rubber ferrule. Uh, that's going to have to be replaced. So that's what we're going to have to look for next, make sure I got one. And what is in it is a Tensai Orange 65S Flex. Yeah, that's not, 65 Orange is a pretty nice little club. However, what are we putting in it? We are putting in it the Hazardous Black. And it's a 75 gram 6.5. 75 gram, 75 gram, 6.5. Hazardous black, okay? So what is the hazardous black? The hazardous in the, for, is from True Temper, i.e. Project X. It's 75 grams-ish. They're all like that. And it is very stout. This is a, this is a low ball hitting, uh, very stout shaft. So it's for an, uh, I'll say a, either an aggressive swing or a very late releaser. That's where I would put this in the category. So when you do it with something like this, which is a 10.5 and a, an LST, we're talking about somebody that's going to swing pretty good. And they want it at 44 and 3 quarters, which is probably one of the best links out there. So let's take it apart and let's get started. Okay, this simple build has really flourished into a whole bunch of tips. All right. So ping, let's go with this. Pro tip. All right. A lot of times what I've been getting is that the pings get stuck on their, on their shafts. And although this is not that case, but you see they have these, they have these bumps on them. All right. And that's where the club grabs into here. See all that little, the mechanical cutouts right there? There we go. And those tend to fit here when they get in here. And, and they tend to get, sometimes it gets stuck, right? Sometimes it gets stuck and they ask me, how do you get rid of that? With one of these. Now this is a no bounce hammer. The red is softer where the yellow is harder. Take the yellow and while you can put it in a vise or something like that and And then, fine. I'm gonna take the red peanut gallery, mm -hmm. and and you wrap on it until it loosens it up. All right, and then it pops off. So there's that. So now the other part is is we gotta take this guy off. Now this isn't part of there. There are at least two other videos in the library that deal with how to take an adapter off. We're not gonna cover that, but we are gonna cover some of the more deeper intricacies of the assembly. So let me go pull this and then we'll get that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about spine and flow and install. That's, that's quite a bit for this one. Okay, the weight is about 74 and some change, so very good to Project X in their, uh, their weight category. So I've already taken the shaft out, right, obviously. And I've got it cleaned up very well, so it's all nice and shiny on the inside. And again, as we always show, there's that, there's a fairly deep insert in there. And that's because there's a, this one's a rubber ferrule. And it's very squishy and it has a very long collar on it in order to support the shaft at that point. So he says he's not label sensitive, and that's a good thing. So what does that mean? So we're gonna do a spine and flow, and the spining is just exactly that, finding the spine of this particular shaft. Now how do spines come about? Well, when you take these, they're these flat pieces of prepreg or flags, and you have to wrap them around, and they gotta touch, or slightly overlap. And when they slightly overlap, and they do that multiple times, then that's where the spine is, is found. That's called the hard side. So when you pull down on it, it, and it, and it goes to the top. And that's what we're gonna find. Now that's, this, that's called spining. Now there's, 
you know, it's it's found by force. There was other ways of doing it about, you know, guys thought if you rolled it on a table that the hard side would find its way to the table side. I've never tried that because I never thought that it would really work that well because all the, if you, in some cases, what they do is they do pre-preg here, 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 in which case now you have multiple sides in which they call the, you know, the hardest spine, spine two, spine three, and that the, the rolling thing just goes right out the door. So we don't do that. And, uh, and, and the cool part about this one is the only part that's really sticking out is the is the hazardous labels, right? So we're gonna do the spining. All right, now what I'm using, uh, there's something, if you go to Amazon, look, Amazon McGolf Custom Clubs, it's a channel that I have and I haven't updated in a while. However, this is on there. And basically, it is this uh, piece of PVC with two pieces that screw on it, and then a set of bearings, all right? A set of bearings, this guy right here, all right? And these are not the very expensive kind either uh, for we're doing what we're doing. And you can find all that stuff on there. <clears throat> if you go to the Amazon store and you buy it through there, I get a bit of a kickback. And uh, so, please do. Alrighty, so I've made a new one, and we're gonna use it. So I've got it in the vise, fairly tight. Gonna have my Sharpie, you always gotta have a Sharpie when you do this. And we take it and we pull down. You're gonna take this and you're gonna pull down. And right, let's do that. All right, so we got it, we're gonna pull down. And we're gonna twist. And you, I don't know if you can hear it, but it goes and it bounces. And that is obviously the hard side. So we make a line across the top, i.e. 12 o'clock for me. And that's, just, that's fine in the spine. And so I make a line right there. And basically what it is is it puts the logo on the back side if I'm left-handed or on the front side if I'm or on the back side if I'm left-handed, and on the front side if I'm right-handed. So not too bad. So let's clean up from that, and then let's do some flowing. Okay, so now we have the, have the spine found, which was we said was the hard side. Now it's time to do the flow. <sighs> flow stands for flat line oscillation. And that means however you twang it, that it's, it's gonna make a straight line. So how do we know it's gonna make a straight line? Well, the only way you're going to know is if you use the head on the shaft that we're going to use. All right, so here comes most of my discussion. Everybody asks, where do I put the spine? So let's talk about that for just a minute before we get started. All right, so flow and spine and flow. Is it the cure-all, end-all of all things balancing? No. All right. Does it make a very consistent golf club? Yeah. Yes, it does. The, uh, there are some people that will live and die by them, and there are some people that won't care and will say there's plenty of evidence to show to the contrary. Okay, show me. Now, and be mostly, did I improve? And they can't say one way or to another. Okay, but it's still, from a construction point of view, it's still making a more consistent golf club. And that's, and that's where we're going. So do we spine and flow? Yes, as much as we possibly can. And because some people are logo sensitive and they have to have it in a certain way and that's just what it is. So the thing with graphite shafts is they're always going to come painted and the labels are going to be in certain directions. Some of them stand out quite a bit, some of them don't. And you have to ask, and this is about for you club makers out there, ask if they're logo sensitive or do they mind the way that it looks in order to tell you what you have to do in your build. Most will say no, but there will be those few that say yes. Okay, it is what it is. And that's what we're doing here. We're gonna find, you know, you're gonna see it when it's all said and done. Now, we did the we did the spining, we talked about it flowing. Then you talk about where do we put the line? Some will say towards the target, some will say after the target. Why is that? Well, if you put it towards the target, you're supposed to get a little more kick. 
If you get it from the target, right, it's supposed to lower it a little bit. Can it? Sure. And where do I put it? I put it in, I put it at noon. And I put it at noon because when we first started doing this, there was kind of a rule floating around about, you know, you, could, you couldn't orient it in such a way to give them a, a more, or give some, a golfer an advantage. Well, if we put it at noon, that was as neutral as you could get. Turns out it worked pretty good because the club bent down, okay? And since then, that's all I've ever been doing. So how do I do it? Well, you guys have seen, I've got my uh, golf, I got the golf mechanics auditor with the single clamp in it. And what I'll do is I'll put that thing at noon as much as I possibly can. And then we'll use a, uh, a homemade, homemade device that I've got that holds a homemade <laughs> laser, okay? So I do have this one for you in the laser. We're gonna put it down in the show notes, but it is a quartet, a quartet mini laser. All right, so what I do is I cut off the, the keychain of it and uh, do that. These are made from a couple of uh, these are these are wire clamps, all right. And what I've done is I've cut off. There's a piece that sticks out this way, and there and it's a line. And I just cut those off in order to get these. And those are the half inch clamps. And there's a three eighths inch clamp that I will use for smaller ones. And I've made that one. If you have smaller ones, see that one? So it's smaller on the top. And and what I try to do is I make the openings opposite each other. So we have an opening here and here. Just uh, for variety, just I think it balances it out. Do I have balance proof? No, but that's what I just think. All righty, so I'm going to move you back down, and we'll show you the flowing. Okay, so the idea here is we're going to turn it on, and you're going to see this go up here. Hopefully it goes into a straight line. So we clamp it on, make sure the thing turns on. There we go, and if we see the red line, and it's wobbling, and it's wobbling pretty good. So let's turn it some. That's wobbling even worse. Well, let's keep going. So this is the part with spine and flow. Some of the, I could be way off on this thing back here. And as we've always, if I was, I've always said in the past that this is like right church, wrong pew kind of thing. Now that's even worse. Let's go this way then. Look at this thing. Okay. We're going to hunt now. I'm getting closer. There we go. Look at that guy. Boom. Okay, so we found the flow. Now the thing to do here is to mark it. It's an all black shaft, so now I use a silver Sharpie. And that'll help me mark it right there. So this does two things. Number one, it tells me how far up the shaft I should sand, and then it gives me an idea of where we have to put it. All right, so you saw where we spined and flowed it. Now the real question is, another pro tip, is that you will find and it was, this one was off too. Certain shaft manufacturers will have their own lines on here or some sort of identifier. This one had a little blue dot, sometimes that's it. And even the blue dot was off a little bit. So now why does that happen? All right, why, Jim, you're so far off. Why does that happen? Well, here, the reason being in a lot of cases is it, it depends on the geometry of the head, all right? If we just had a, a weight that looked like this, which is a lot of folks will use to find the, the flow of the shaft, right? Use this, it's very symmetrical as it goes on to the shaft. So it would probably flow right where we found the, right where we found the spine. However, if you look, we well can get way back here. If you look, here's the shaft going into here, and here's all the head. All right, so that geometry plays with where you find that flow. And each head is weighed a little bit differently. So we know the LST has some weight moved forward, even if it has this weight. And I don't even know how big it is. It should tell me. 
and it doesn't. And there's different, and there's different places to put this in order to help you with uh, draw bias, fade bias, or just down the middle. And, and all this weighting here, the weighting that goes in here, the actual shape plays to that in some cases. So is it going to be a foolproof method? No, but it helps you get started instead of having to hunt around just like I did. And, and But we did get to find it. We saw where it flatline oscillated. Now, can you twang it the other way? Yeah, yeah, you can. As a matter of fact, I should have showed you, but if once I got it going this way, once I twang it this way, it's going to go that way as well. So that's the whole reason for flow and making something consistent, all right? So that was it. I mean, that was pretty cool, right? Spine and flow, everybody wants to know it. That was a very quick and dirty version of how to do it. Is this the only spine finder on the mar or that you can use? No, there's all kinds of those out there as well. If you have a, a strain machine where you, where you audit where you audit shafts, that would find it just as easily as well. There's uh, Golf Mechanics has a different variety of it where they have a handle with bearings that you push down with. Lots of different paths to get to the same spot. And then what you have to have is a very, what I like to talk about here in the clamping mechanism is that if you're gonna clamp down, then you flow up and down. If you clamp sideways, then you flow this way. And that way you flow into the clamp where it's most solid. That way you don't get a wobbler, okay? That, that's just a, a function, right, of, of doing this. And then once you get it in there, you're gonna create yourself a very, very, very nice consistent club. So I'm gonna put it together, we'll put the grip on it, and we'll show you how it turned out. All right, it's day's end, and the glue is about three quarters dry, and we're not gonna send it just yet, we're gonna send it tomorrow. However, combo number five, I actually, boxes to builds number five, we talked about spining and flowing, what it does for the shaft, where it goes and that kind of thing. I hope you guys learned a little something about it. Now, there she's back into it with the, with the shaft on it and the new MCC Align grip. And it turned out pretty good, 44 and three quarters. Now, I wanted to spend a little more time with this because there's some uh, little differences. We went with a slightly heavier shaft about 10 grams on the average, 10 to 15 grams on the average from the standard, right? 60 to 75. So you think that's right around, you know, we'll call it one and a half, two swing weight points. And if the normal driver's running around D2, we're talking about D4. Well, and then we have this guy, which is a midsize, and we think, well, okay, that's gonna make it even just straight right back out. However, even at 44 and three quarters, I mean, this dead on solid 44 and three quarters, this thing is in the high D, D area, which means this guy is heavy, which means this weight's pretty substantial. Okay, so it is what it is. And he said he talked about getting more familiar with the weight. Well, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna, actually this might turn out to be the way they are because they're very strong, they're very strong golfers, right? Very strong golfers. So I measured it up. It's a, it's a 10 degree, not 10 and a half. Jeremiah, and the half is really not going to make that big, much difference. Although the way that this thing is shaped, it wants to set up a, maybe a little more upright, and that, and that might work out for you And just letting you know in the video. And uh, I think that's it. So this guy's going back to Georgia and to go be played by an upper-level kind of golfer. So, again, if you have any questions, put them down in the show notes. Please like and subscribe. We also have a, a Monday live stream, live talk, whatever you want to call it, on YouTube and Facebook. And we talk with people from around the world, golf fittings, golf repairs, golf opinions, and maybe even what's going on in, uh, around in our little world uh, in that day. So if you would join us, 5.30 Eastern time there, or 17.30 p.m., it works either way. And as always, let's see your scores go low.